Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fourth presentation in our Seeker uh, Research Lunchtime Snapshot Series during National Careers Week. Before we get underway today, I'd just like to make an acknowledgement of country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, the Career Industry Council of Australia would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connection to land, sea and community. I'd like to acknowledge that today I'm hosting this session on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples participating in the session with us today. I'd now like to hand over to Dr. Elizabeth Knight, who is Seeker's Research Advisor, and she'll be taking us through the session today. Thanks, Lizzie. Thanks, David. And what a delight it is to be here on National Careers Week. And we've just so enjoyed this, these quick research snapshots that we've had this week. And we've been delighted by um, hearing from three um, sets of speakers about, you know, the ecosystem of career. And today we're going to have um, a look internally. And I'm really so happy to be um, introducing my beautiful colleague, um, Dr. Sujin Kim from James Cook University, who's going to talk about her award-winning um, doctoral research and looking at the internal motivations for young people. And there's um, time for questions at the end. So remember, do hop on to the Q&A function um, and I'll be curating questions at the end. Off you go, Sujin. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sujin Kim and I'm working as a lecturer at James Cook University on our um, Commonwealth-supported and refreshed graduate certificate of career development. Um, it is with great honor that I share a segment of my doctoral research on the subject of young university students' career orientation at the CICA Research Snapshot Snapshot today. Um, I started my research while wondering what key competencies for university students in the 21st century are and what career attitudes would be required to obtain employability in the future, even after university graduation. I have thought back to my university period. I have had time to reflect on what should be done during the university to be a better professional in work and life over the long term. Uh, my study um, was undertaken based on Prudian career theory. So you may know the Prudian career theory or not. I also did not know the concept of this theory and came to know it until after conducting this research. The term Prudian career concept was derived from the Greek god Prudius who changes shape at will. While the career environment becomes more dynamic, insecure, and unpredictable, Korean career theory argues that the individuals adapt to the environment following their values rather than being dependent on traditional or organizational career structure. So Korean career orientation can be broadly understood as an attitude toward a career characterized by two dimensions, self-directedness and values-driven attitude. So self-directed management behavior leads individual to take an independent role in managing their vocational behavior while having a values and values driven attitude enables them to use their own values to guide their career rather than being guided by external standards such as salary and promotion. The literature review suggests that uh, promoting the adoption of this orientation among young people will help them perform more adaptively and lead, lead psychologically healthy lives. And young people with new career orientations potentially benefit from more positive career development. It is important to understand the career orientations of younger people who are still transitioning to adult life as those with new career orientations are likely to be attractive to employers in rapidly changing work environments. However, what values were referred to in this theory remains unknown and I also wondered what values were predominant for undergraduate students in the 21st century. In addition, I wanted to explore whether they no longer support traditional career values or if supporting them would be considered not beneficial. 
Thus, the main aims of my study were to determine how extensively each set of values was expressed by contemporary young people and to what extent were these values held simultaneously. Furthermore, I conducted a test to determine whether holding such values as identified in the interview is beneficial or detrimental. Um, after obtaining ethical clearance for this study, I started interviewing 24 university students about what values they hold and what values they would like to follow even after graduation and how they define career success. So interviews were continued until saturation was reached, after which time we stopped it, uh, recruitment. Saturation was indicated when no new information on my topic was forthcoming. So I asked such questions like, how and why did you choose your degree? What are your career goals? What have you mainly considered in choosing your career? What actions have you taken so far to secure your future career? And also I ask lastly, how would you define career success and what would that mean to you? Um, so the students were mainly full-time domestic and Australian students and the age range was from 17 to 25 and 50% of female students were included and they were from various disciplines like physio, business, psychology, and public health. And 75% of students were working in industry of hospitality, retail, and manufacturing. And I use theoretical frameworks to determine which career values are underlying in students' narratives. Interestingly, there were mixed findings between Korean career theory and traditional um, career theory. 75% of students mentioned freedom or autonomy and fit to self in their career plan. And more than 60% of students commented on self-reliance personal satisfaction, and work-life balance in their future careers. Meanwhile, proactivity and keeping updated were less salient themes among them. Um, surprisingly, job security was also mainly commented theme for them. They wanted to have stability in their future job. More than half of the students preferred to work up the rank, even in a single company. Uh, more than half of the students expressed uh, preferences for their progression. And the central concept of traditional careers such as tenure, loyalty, and commitment were less commented on, and high status were, was less important to them than other themes. So the study confirms that the central values for young people and which values can drive young students' careers now and future. So in practice, HR managers and recruiters need to be aware that young adults might expect freedom, autonomy, and fit with their values in an ideal workplace while they are still initially seeking job security and structured opportunity for advancement. In the next phase, I wondered whether holding the traditional career values is de detrimental to young people. Thus, I included Prodian Korea, traditional career, and career competencies in one model, generated career profiles, and tested which career values or attitudes and competencies should be encouraged for young university students. Uh, the purpose of this um, study was to identify new career profiles based on the combination of Prudian and traditional career orientations and career competencies. The second purpose was to examine the relationship between the profiles and career development. Um, data were collected from 482 young adult students and um, the mean age was 20.46 years old and standard deviation was 3.19. 
uh, to identify new career profiles, latent profile analysis was conducted using tidy LPA um, package in R based on the variables of interest. So this um, profile analysis is a person-centered statistical technique used to classify groups showing similar patterns based on the study um, variables of interest. After that, differences were examined using um, one-way ANOVA between career orientations profiles on um, career development variables such as perceived future employability, academic success, university commitment, career goal commitment, and career, career salience. Um, in the results, three distinct profiles were identified, mixed oriented, low traditional, and traditional and unidentified. The first profile was considered mixed oriented and rep represented most participants, 74.6%. Scores were similar and near average on all variables in this profile. The second profile was labeled low traditional uh, because traditional career orientation was over one standard deviation below average with protein career orientation and career competencies around or just above the average. The last profile was labeled, labeled traditional and unidentified as it reflected those low on agency and identity. And I tested the significant differences on the developmental, career developmental variables. Um, so mixed oriented and low traditional students exhibited higher future employability and academic success than the traditional and unidentified profile. And the mixed oriented group had a higher university commitment than the low traditional and traditional and unidentified groups. The mixed oriented and low traditional groups also scored significantly higher than the traditional and unidentified group on career goal commitment and career salience. So to sum up, the findings emphasize that developing either protein career orientation or traditional career orienta orientation at this young adult stage can be helpful for individuals' career development and organizational commitment. However, a well-developed level of awareness of their vocational identity is critical to positive development, regardless of orientation. In particular, a low vocational identity awareness was a distinguishing feature of these profiles. Um, achieving greater, greater awareness of one's vocational identity is a developmental task and helps in the psychological adjustment of young people. Therefore, I do recommend that career counselors or practitioners focus on honing career competencies by facilitating the formation of professional identities of their students when advising. Um, also, practically, um, counselors and education, educational institutions can assist students to shape their vocational identity during university. Um, in individual career counseling sessions, techniques such as mindfulness, cognitive, cognitive reframing, and use of targeted questions like exploring what constitutes a meaningful career to you. So these kind of questions can facilitate discussions with students regarding career indecision and barriers to shaping, to shaping their vocational identity. Furthermore, um, expanding all exposure to the workplace, um, such as university placements, can help students reevaluate and reaffirm their career choices and identity. The identification and clarification of young people's vocational identity 
uh, through workplace experience can be utilized as personal career resources to motivate themselves and display persistence in their careers. And interventions designed to enhance student adaptability should facilitate them progressing um, their future career. And career practitioners should not assume that today's young people endorse contemporary careers values only. They should encourage young people to explore the full range of their values test out the implications for holding these values and then look at ways to have those values met. Um, notably, young adult students place the greater importance on job security, uh, which, which might adversely affect them later if they find themselves in an uncertain career landscape. Um, Certix et al. found that undergraduates who cherished job security and were from underprivileged family backgrounds remained unemployed longer after university graduation. Therefore, active career interventions should be implemented, particularly among students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, for example, to foster their autonomy, vocational identity, and adaptability, or potentially malleable characteristics in young people. Such interventions might also give skills that transfer to life after completing their education. Uh, from the results of quantitative study, Career practitioners can develop different um, strategies to assist to different profiles. And students in the mixed profile would likely want to follow organizational career paths, whether their values of autonomy or freedom can be met. Counselors can help explore these values and assist to make plans to find situations that suit them. Um, those who are more Korean than traditional could be engaged to craft how they might make their way without being dependent on, on organizations such as freelancing or being self-employed. Uh, younger students who were in the traditional and unidentified profile show the preferences for following traditional organizational path, they might need, to, might need to help to develop better clarity regarding their vocational identity. Thus, career practitioners should, should prioritize, prioritize interventions for this group as these young people reported the least confidence in their academic abilities and their future than the other groups. Providing more opportunities to increase their self-awareness can help them clarify their vocational identity and find a suitable um, career. Um, so this is my end of presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions related to my research, please feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn or email. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Eugene. That was such a rich um, and really <clears throat> detailed um, insight into your work. There's lots of questions and lots of engagement. So let me pose a couple of them to you as we've got a good amount of time for questions. Um, <clears throat> what do you think and um, about the practical imp implications for teaching staff in universities? We talk about the graduate certificate higher education, and we know that you know a key source of advice is lecturers um, in universities. How would you, um, Geraldine Rodolfi asks, uh, how would you um, help support those teaching staff? I, I think, and what's your advice in from your findings? So, from my findings, the teaching staff also that experiences in industry. So these days, the university recruitment has the trend that 
um, trend to employ um, the teaching staff who has much more experiences in industry and real workplace. So if you don't have any experiences in, in industry, I always like to recommend to get more involved in community practice or the workplace um, placement for the teaching staff because the um, integration between the knowledge and theory and the workplace experiences can give more insight to our students. Brilliant, thanks so much, Eugen. And do you think, and there's another question from Grace Kinch um, in, the, um, in the questions, do you think that's similar for um, the staffing component in secondary schools? And are there any other insights you'd have for secondary school um, practice? Hmm. For the secondary school um, uh, practitioners, also um, um, having the broadened um, knowledge about um, various disciplines and the industries, that would be very important for them to broaden their um, career perspective. So uh, rather than focusing on just one industry or just the narrow knowledge that you have, try to broaden um, your knowledge and the perspective and be proactive in engaging like Korea expos or Korea festivals. Um, so like a by, a, by a learning by doing, uh, that can also help for career practitioners in secondary school, school people. That's brilliant, Sujin. And Sujin, I know you mentioned um, about the work you're doing at the moment. Do you think there's something in terms of initial training for career development practitioners that your, um, your findings can add to? So for career practitioners, uh, probably we will have the um, expertise in specific area. Mm -hmm. So use that knowledge for enhancing your practice. And also, it's always important to provide evidence-based practice. So don't forget to read your articles, any articles regularly, like up, what is the upcoming trends in this field and in this practice. So always be accessible to the um, evidence-based practice. So it will help you a lot. That's brilliant. And Kate Morton um, says she thinks so, making career profiles um, events for students. And I was just really taken by your kind of discussion and insight in professional identity. And I think, you know, we maybe don't talk enough about that. And I presume you're meaning, you know, general, not capital P professional, but for everybody. How do you think we can get that across to, to people we're working with in, you know, different settings? Mm. So professional identity, actually, the whole that I researched a lot, criticize a bit of the professional identity because that, that would be probably like for privileged people, not from uh, real blue collar people or from real workplace people. That would be probably like identity for privileged people. Uh, but I, um, so, but I, but I, while, while I do my research, I realized that probably the profession, professional identity is to know yourself Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what you are good at and what you like and dislike. So it actually uh, increasing your self-awareness is really relevant to professional, having the professional vocational identity. That's brilliant. Thanks so much. And Sujin, I know and maybe colleagues um, on the line don't that you have um, professional practice experience in Korea. And I just wonder if you could comment from your experience working in both um, country contexts. Do you um, do you have any insights um, from one or the other? Uh, because I was born in and raised in Asian country like South Korea, um, there is a lot of emphasis on having a job uh, like a doctor or a teacher with high status. But uh, after that, um, the students realize that they, they are not suitable for the occupation. For example, it is, not, it is not sustainable. So after getting higher scores in their school and becoming a doctor, and then later on, they start to feel miserable and they don't know what to do after achieving the specific profession. So I, I'd like to uh, suggest that um, the working um, uh, practitioners with Asian background student. Um, I'd like to suggest the practitioners that probably explore a more the genuine interest and aptitude and personality of the students and always just um, think about 
the relationship with parents because the parents has lots of um, um, significant importance on the Asian um, students. Oh, that's really valuable insight, Sujin. And when you were giving that answer, it made me think of, you know, the growing discussions about well-being and career. And did, did that come up in your research uh, sort of explicitly? So for my research, because I studied for young people in Generation G, so they concern a lot of mental health. So they are not willing to compromise their mental health. So always like uh, uh, providing a nurturing environment and also taking care of their own values would be very um, important in this contemporary workplace. That's wonderful, Sujin. And my final question is, um, this is wonderful to have this kind of level of quality doctoral research in careers, I think, um, in Australia. And I just wondered if you had, and many of our colleagues who engaged in applied research as practitioners, and also some who are interested in, in furthering their, you know, postgraduates, masters or doctoral studies. Do you have any advice to somebody considering, like you as a practitioner, taking their career on a research trajectory? So it's always um, important to have the evidence-based based practice, and I'm sure that experienced practitioners can bring better ideas and better insights in research. So please use your knowledge and bring your practice experience into research so that the researchers and scholars can get to know, and also we provide the better practice in career services in Australia. Oh, that's brilliant. What a lovely note to end on. Thank you so much, Shujin, for all your sharing of your great knowledge. And I can see the chats coming in, people very grateful for sharing. So thanks and over to you, David. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Lizzie. And thank you, uh, Sujin. Um, we have one final uh, session tomorrow um, as part of our snapshot series. So if you've not registered, there's still time to do that. Uh, focusing on career support for students with disabilities uh, from our colleagues from the University of Wollongong. So if you're interested in that, uh, please visit the National Careers Week events page. You'll be able to find it under tomorrow's date. Um, again, they're free to attend. Feel free to register. And we look forward to seeing you then. Enjoy, uh, if you're on the Eastern Seaboard, enjoy your afternoon. If you're on the Western Seaboard, uh, still a bit of time before lunchtime. So, but have, have a wonderful day, everybody. And again, uh, Sujin and Lizzie, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, see you tomorrow.